what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to make a crawfish etouffee and a corn mock chou. Two traditional South Louisiana dishes. The corn mock chou is a side dish to the crawfish etouffee that we're making. What I have for ingredients is, if you look here, this is Louisiana crawfish meat. I'm not doing imported Chinese crawfish meat. This is a product of Louisiana. And I feel it's very important to support my neighbors to the west. Uh, we've got some corn. We got some green bell pepper, some red bell pepper, and a little bit of onions. And we'll also throw some of these green onions in there too. For the etouffee, the diced tomatoes, the bell pepper, onions, tomato sauce back here. That's green onions. This is some Worcestershire sauce. This is a Cajun seasoning that I have that I'll be using. This is minced garlic that I'll be using. The first thing every Cajun dish, the first thing they say is first you got to make a roux. So we're going to be making a roux here in a second. In this pot, I'm taking this pot up with vegetable oil. I'm bringing it up to a, a temp. Then once I get that oil pretty hot, I'm going to add this flour and you're just going to see me stirring it till I get it to the color that I want. I like to have a more Cajun roux than a Creole roux. A Creole roux is usually blonder than a Cajun roux. I like mine to look like a dark peanut butter, almost going to a coffee. That's basically what we'll be doing here in just a second. All right, so that oil should be warm enough for me to start adding this flour and when you're making a roux all you're doing is you're basically cooking that flour you're coloring that flour up and once you start making this roux you never stop stirring you got to keep stirring this stuff so it doesn't burn on the bottom you want to slowly bring it to the color that you want and that's all there is to it. It's not rocket science. So basically all I'm doing right now is babysitting this thing, making sure I don't let it sit down there and stick on that bottom. And I am going to cool it down a little bit over here because I, I popped the temp up some to control this so it doesn't get out of hand. What you don't want to do is burn your root. So you got to keep it moving. Got to keep stepping. Got to keep picking them up and laying them down. All right, so this is it. This is about the color I go with my roux. I have gone darker than this. What you're doing basically is cooking this flour, and the darker you go, the more well done you're cooking it. Uh, I started off at medium, and as it started coloring up, I moved up a little bit more, and I moved up a little bit more, and then when it started really getting brown, I came down with it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull this completely off the heat source over to another spot but i have to keep stirring this because this black iron skillet is retaining some of that heat so i've got to stir it until i've got a nice smooth consistency and a decent color and this is how i make a roux and like i said it wouldn't be a cajun recipe i think their angel food cake recipes start with first you make a roux So while I got all that cooking, getting ready to add the rest of the stuff, I can take the time to go ahead and I cut up some of this fresh French bread. And with French bread, I like that stuff to be crunchy. So I started off real low on a bake in the oven until that butter melts down and I start seeing it get toasty. Garlic powder, we're gonna make this garlic bread. Parsley. And I'm not even going to turn this stuff on yet. I'm just going to put it in the oven. It's staging. And into the oven we'll go. What you see me now is passing a rag through the pot. All that is is oil and flour. A little bit of leftover brew. That's not going to hurt anything. I put that pot back up and I'm going to use it to finish cooking. I moved the roux over into this bowl so it would quit cooking because this thing retains some heat and it doesn't go in the recipe yet, so that's fine. What we're going to do is let this cool down and that oil will separate out and come up to the top. We're going to take out most of the oil. What we want is that good, dark, rich flour that's down there under that oil to put in for the flavoring on this. So we're going to start the etouffee. And uh, it wouldn't be Cajun cooking if you weren't using lots of butter because i'm doing two pounds of crawfish i'm going to use three sticks of butter to start off with 
Usually I do two sticks per pound, but I'm going to do three sticks of butter in that pot and get it cooking. I'm also going to come back while I'm cooking my etouffee. Oh, by the way, this is my rice back here. I've already got it cooked uh, this afternoon. Everybody knows how to cook rice. I ain't got to show you how to do that. So I've got it back there, which is what you serve the etouffee over. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple sticks of butter and put it back in this pot and get this melting down. And we'll be showing you corn mock shoe in a second. And the etouffee, once this butter gets melted down, you'll see when I start adding my veggies and how I'm doing it and why. I got my butters melted and I just put some minced garlic in there. I'm going to do the same thing over here in this pot for the corn mock shoe. I started the corn mock shoe with two sticks of butter. And I just put that garlic in there. I did go ahead and add that fourth stick of butter over here. So we got four sticks of butter so far for the etouffee. We got two sticks for the corn mock shoe. And we're going to start the corn mock shoe. Looks like it's ready to start cooking down some veggies. So I'm going to start the corn mock shoe with some onions. I'm going to start it with some diced up uh, green bell pepper. Diced red bell pepper in here too. More of that actually. Let's give them a little onion. Or not onion. I already did that. That's tomato. Come on. I'm going to stir this up. And since this is more raw than my corn, I like getting that to cooking. And you know when your veggies is cooked, when your onions turn clear. So I let this cook for a little bit before I put my corn in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the top on that. I'm trying to get this up to the temp where it's ready. Let's go ahead and do it. For this phase of the etouffee, we got four sticks of butter and we've got two tablespoons of garlic in there. The butter's melted down. We got a little bit of heat to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put my bell pepper in there. And you see, that's a big old bowl of bell pepper. That was three bell peppers, two and a half onions that I chopped up. I'm gonna put this in here and we're gonna do the same thing with this. We just wanna cook this down until the onions look clear and the bell peppers turn a a darker dingier green all right so for the corn mock shoe it's not completely cooked down but it doesn't have to be because I'm fixing to add um, my corn in there and it's got to cook down too you want to get that stuff all soft get a good blend so I'm gonna bring my corn in oh yeah mix that in and here's the thing with corn mock shoe I'm gonna put a little milk in there and I know people on the, that watch these cooking videos. How much are you putting? How much are you putting? That ain't how I cook. I just I eyeball stuff. I got some salt and pepper and a little Cajun seasoning in there. Wouldn't be corn mock shoe if you didn't put some milk in there. Oh, yeah. And let all that cook together. It's really a simple dish to make. A etouffee is... Getting a little bit of bubbling, but we ain't anywhere near ready. Uh, this looks like chopped up vegetables. It does not look like food. I'm also going to put in some of these tomatoes in here. A little bit of these diced tomatoes. There you go. Uh, this recipe came from a Cajun roommate I had back at University of Iowa back in 1988 and I don't have permission to say his first name so I'm just gonna say he was a Bertrand and good luck looking him up couldn't throw a rock down in South Louisiana without hitting a Bertrand in the head so anyway Bertrand was my roommate and we brought crawfish tails in the freezer when we went up there and this was his grandmother's recipe that I've tweaked and played with since then all right, so if you look at this, this looks like food now. And if you look and you pull that onion up on the side of the pot, that's a pretty clear onion. And that's what most of these onions look like when I put them on the side of the pot. That's how you know when you're ready for this next step. Next step is we're going to cool this pot down. So I'm going to put, I'm going to take a little bit of the heat off of it. And I'm going to put some water in there to stop all that foolishment. And once I do that, that should stop that roll. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of tomato sauce. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to call that one, two, three. 
three and a half of those tablespoons of that roux and tomato sauce. What that's going to do is this is pretty bland. Its, it's flavor is going to be butter, roux, tomato sauce, and everything that's cooked out of these veggies. So at this point, this is where we are spicing it to get it to the flavor profile that we want. Get my tasting spoon, which I can use for the first time, but then I'm also going to get my dipping spoon that I got to get to keep going to my tasting spoon so I'm not putting this spoon back in the pot. Here's my tasting spoon. About what I thought. It's going to need salt. So I'm putting that much salt in there. I'll call that a tablespoon. How's that? It's going to need some Cajun spice. I'll call that a tablespoon. A little Worcestershire sauce in there. I'm going to put about that much in there. There's my tasting spoon. After I put the spices in, let me see. Oh, that's pretty dang spot on. It's a little salty, but when you put it over rice, it's going to be fine. When I put the crawfish in, that's going to pull from the spice. It's got a little bit of spice, but I'm going to give it a little bit more. A little cayenne in there. This is the time where we add crawfish. They're more expensive because they're from right here in Louisiana, or right across the state line in Louisiana, but that's the way you want to get your crawfish. Now, these crawfish came from a processing plant where they were caught, they were brought into a processing plant, and they did what they call a blanch on them. They aren't cooked all the way through. They got them just hot enough to make them turn the right color and break that meat away from the tail where they could peel them and put them in those bags. So they still need to cook, and we're going to cook them for about 15 minutes in there until these tails are completely balled up. Right, so the crawfish have been on for about not much time at all. This is the time, because all this other stuff is cooked down, this is where I'm putting my color in here. And I put those green onions in, and I'll get me a little color in this dish. And a little flavor, because I'm going to save some for my mock shoe over there. Oh, yeah. Let that come back up to temp, and turn those crawfish tails into little balls. Now, when I'm over here to my mock shoe, I'm going to add a little color in there, too. A little bit of color. Oh, yeah. All right, so this, you see what I said? The crawfish will turn into little balls, those tails. Instead of being straight, they have balled up. They are completely cooked. The veggies are cooked. I have pre-plated a little bit of rice over here to show you how we want to plate something like this. I'm going to come over and go right in the middle of that rice. Oh, yeah. Probably going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to get this crawfish over there where he belongs. Going to come over here to the corn muck shoe. I'm going to use a strainer for the corn muck shoe. Straining spoon. Put that right there. Alright, so here's our garlic bread that I had made. I want to clean this plate up a little bit before I hand that to somebody. I'm going to get a little of that there, a little of this here. I'm going to give them two pieces of garlic bread. And we're going to call that crawfish etouffee, corn mock choux, and garlic French bread. Etouffee. All right. Now, my son is my biggest critic. My son shows zero emotion in anything. I gave him a brand new truck. He, he, he kind of cracked a smile when he saw his truck. So let's see what he thinks about his etouffee bite. It's 
got good flavor to it. Got good flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And that's all you're going to say. It's You're good. not going to say, man, that's the best crawfish ate Crawfish, look, it's got some crawfish in there. <laughs> some veggies, got a little bit of salt. All those flavors are combining. Like when Ratatouille took the strawberry and the cheese and ate it together. What? I'll put it in the video, don't you worry. Corn box shoe. Who is Ratatouille? You ain't never watched Ratatouille? The, no. the Pixar or DreamWorks or something, no, whatever. Movie. It's a movie about a cooking rat. Okay. Well, what do you think of the corn mock shoe? The corn mock shoe was really good. And then bread. Yeah, I want to see if it crunched all the way through. Is it pretty toasted through? It's pretty soft in the middle, but I like that. Okay. All right, I like it a little crunchy all the way through. But he yeah. likes the soft, so we'll, that's the way it goes. We'll rate it a nice little 9.3 out of 10. 9.3? Mm -hmm. Dude. You can't rate everything a 10 because if you... You're, you're, like, work, you're working on your inheritance. You realize that? Look, you can't rate <laughs> everything a 10 because, you know? Yeah. All right, folks. Gordon Ramsay would say otherwise. <laughs> All right, folks. There you go. Crawfish etouffee, corn mock shoe, and uh, garlic French bread toasted. Mm -hmm. That's our meal for tonight. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hey, if you haven't, click that like and subscribe button. We'd love to see you come back for some more. <laughs>